Hey guys, Tyler here at Alder Audio, and this is video three in my little Transformer series where I've been bringing you all along with me as I develop a new Transformer product. I just thought that'd be kind of a fun thing to experiment with here on YouTube. And uh, for those of you who have been watching this series, this will look familiar to you. This is the Triad A9J that inspired kind of everything and got it going. People love these indirect boxes for bass guitars. And today is the end of the line. So I have now a fully developed and vintage inspired transformer. It's in a case that looks like this. And these are available as of today at alderaudio.com. Now the final uh, place that this is probably going to get put is in a direct Direct box that gets sold as a finished product to consumers, but I thought in the in the meantime, why not release the component for any DIY people out there who want to make your own wolf box style DIs or things like that. The other thing I'm going to do on the website is do a page for custom wines. I'm going to be offering one-off wines for transformers where you can put in the primary inductance and the secondary inductance and actually just order a single or multiple custom transformers for anybody who's interested in that. Now, as for the video today, we're going to get a little tiny bit into the technical, not very deep today, but a little bit into the technical of what makes this thing tick and why I think this is a one of a kind. I don't think there's ever been a DI box transformer like this one. And then after that, we're going to do a shootout versus the A9J. So for those of you who just want to skip ahead of the shootout, I think I'll put a, a time stamp in here for that. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> All right, so if you watched the previous video, this board should look somewhat familiar. What I have here are just the most important measurements that I decided to focus in on in comparing the new transformer, which I'm calling the TL20, to the measurements on the A9J. Now, in the previous video, I did a lot more measurements and kind of explained them, so if you want more of the technical detail, you can go back to that one. But for now, I'm just gonna do like a quick run through where we landed on these. So the first measurement here is probably the most important. It's the primary inductance and the A9J was at 1430. We said we wanted to be at that or higher for the new product. And what we landed at was 2000 Henry's of inductance. Now that's probably the number I am most proud of because this is a toroidal transformer. If you noticed before, there's a hole in the middle here. And uh, toroidal is just like a fancy word for donut shaped. So there's a core in here that uh, looks like this here and the wire has to go through the middle and if you want a higher inductance you need more wraps and there's only so much wire and the wire can only be so small to fit through the middle of that core so going as crazy high as 2000 henry's of inductance it's incredibly difficult to do in a toroidal transformer and i think this may be unique. I, I am not aware of there ever being a direct box transformer offered in a toroid, and I think that this is the reason right here. It's hard to get the high inductance. And so that's why I'm excited about this is that you get some of the other benefits of a toroidal transformer if you can get to the high inductance there. So you'll see some of those benefits in the other numbers like the leakage inductance, that's the second number here. So we had a half a Henry of leakage in the A9J and the idea is we want it to be lower and where we ended up was 0.3 Henry of leakage in the TL20. Now the quality factor is kind of a complicated measurement and the A9J had the best one of the previous transformers we looked at it has a quality factor of two. The TL20 has a quality factor of 80. And that is definitely by nature of it being a toroidal transformer. They're much more efficient and uh, kind of have less loss inside of them. And you see that reflected in that quality factor number. I also put the ratio down here just to remind everybody these are both 12 to 1 transformers. Now that's all the detail we're going to go into now. If you want to hear more technical deep dive, I just didn't want to get too far into the weeds in this video. I was going to show maybe some variations and, and show what they sound like in, in these parameters, but it just got too weedy and I wanted to kind of get to the point. So we're really just focusing on where I landed here with the TL20. And now that we've looked at all of the numbers and how these compare, we want to find out does that uh, translate to a sonic difference. So we're going to move on to a shootout. This is going to be the TL20 versus the A9J. I won't do it blind this time. You're going to be able to see the labels on the screen. We're just going to go back and forth on base DI and uh, let me know what you think. Here we go.
so those are the samples, and just like the first video, we're talking about very subtle differences here. But I think on something like Bass DI, when it's going to affect your sound for literally everything you do, getting into the details is worth it. And to me, I think that there is a, a clarity boost that we've achieved here. But I'll admit, I think I'm totally biased at this point. I've spent hours upon hours listening to these things and trying to develop one that's better. So I'm really more interested in what you all think. I do really appreciate the comments and the feedback on uh, getting to hear getting to hear what people think about these sounds. Does it matter to you? Do you prefer one or the other? Can't hear a difference? Let me know. And uh, that is it for me today. If you got more questions about these, if you want to chat about them, send me a message over at alderaudio.com. Would love to wind you a custom transformer if you would like one. And otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you make some music today.